Keep reading. Obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Now, what has happened is that the mamas have not taught the daughters how they should be conducting themselves, and the word of God has been made a lie. The word of God ain't a lie, but people say that Bible don't work. Look at all these black women over there with kids and no daddies. The Bible says that they're supposed to have husbands. Well, they all say they believe in God, but they don't have got no husbands. Right. Nah, that Bible ain't real. We make the, the word of God a lie, but it's actually not. We just don't apply what is written. Why? Because we want to live after our own flesh. And what it's got is a whole system of a battered woman's facility with men that hang out around here and creep all up and down the damn street. Am I right about that? Why you think all the men are over here? Bring it out. There you go. Right. Give me that in uh, Second Chronicles. What's his question? 7 and 14. He wants to know how not to be a sip. How not to be a sip. Good question. Good question. And that'll go with what, what I'm answering for you. Let's read that. Second Chronicles 7 and 14. Here's the way you're not, not to be a sip. Read that. Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14. If my people, which are called by my name. What? If my people, which are called by my name. Now, this is what you got to realize. First thing is not being a sip, not being husbandless. Daughters are out of control. Sons are out of control. Your life is out of order. You have to understand who God calls you. That Bible was not talking about everybody. That's what man-made religion has taught you. We not, we're not a religious organization. No. We come out here to teach you who you are according to the Bible. And what you must do as the people of the Bible. To get your life right with God so we can end this stuff. And he said what? If my people, if my people, you are the Israelites, and I don't know what tribe, what race do does the world call you? No, the world. What is the race the world call you? What? Huh? African American. What about you? Uh, right now, I just call myself American. Yeah, where did where did they drop off the ship? Is your ancestors. Where did this ship stop when your ancestors came from here to here? Did it stop in North America, Central America, South America? North America. So in the Bible, as you were saying, God calls us Judah. That's our God-given name. And this is a name that was given to us once we was conquered in slavery. They say, you're no longer Israel. You're going to be black niggas. That's what you're going to be. And, and what happened in the process of time? We started living like niggas. We didn't live like who? Read it again. If my people we didn't live like God's people, we live like niggas now. It's just it's the truth of the matter. It's how it is. We down here in Miami and Overtown. Let's be real. We live like niggas. We don't live like the people of God. Some of us we simps. Some of our women are harlots. The young girls are out of control. It's drugs all over this place. It's murders. It's death. We don't live like God's people. But God said, if what? If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. If you humble yourself. That's the thing. Because when we read this, you'll, you'll acknowledge your mind. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's right. It does sound right. But then pride will tell you, I'm going to do my own thing. Right, right. Yeah, that sounds good. But yeah, God, I hear you. That's pride against God. God said, if you do what? Which are called by my name shall humble themselves. You gotta humble yourself and do thus saith the Lord. When God says, keep the Sabbath day holy, you can't say, well, hey, I'm hungry. It's Saturday. I hear what you're saying, God, but I'm hungry. Well, then that's not God's fault. That's yours because you didn't prepare the day before. Bring it out. You got to humble yourself and do what God says. Read and pray and seek my face. Now, the thing is, you don't want to be a simp no more. Your heart is in messed up life. Praying ain't going to help if God don't want to hear you. Right. Give me that Proverbs chapter 8. Praying don't help if God don't want to hear you. Because here's the, here's the thing. I want to ask y'all. Have black folk been praying since, since slave days? Who been praying? Hell, ain't nobody prayed more than black and Hispanic people right. since the slave days, right? 
Well, why ain't God heard us then? Because he said, if my people pray, we haven't done what? Humbled ourselves to do what he says to do. Now, look why God wouldn't hear your prayers. Because we've been here 500, 600 years. And it sounds like God ain't hearing our prayers. Well, it's an answer why he ain't. Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 9. He that turn he that turneth away his ear from hearing the law. If you turn away your ear from hearing the laws, where are the laws of God found at? Are they found on a wanted poster, on a billboard? Where are they found at? In the Bible. God said, if you turn away your ear from hearing my laws, read, even his prayer, his what? His prayer uh -huh. shall be abomination. Ooh, wee. I guarantee you, black folk didn't know that was in the Bible, did we, while we was praying? God said, if you don't want to hear my law and humble yourself to do it, your prayer is disgusting in my ears. Look how we living. Has God heard our prayers? What you guys? What you gonna say? Okay, He ain't hearing it. So in order, now go back to Second Chronicles. Come on, man, keep your fingers on there. 7 and 14 in order for us to do what God has said. Read that. 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14. If my people, which are called by my name, They're called by the name of Israel, from the tribe of Judah, that's what God really calls you, but when you live how you want to live and turn your ear from the law, you're an African American. Right. In the eyes of God, he don't hear them, because them niggas. <laughs> he don't hear them, because you ain't doing that but praying... All you're doing is praying that that girl, your raw dog, that ain't your wife, ain't pregnant. All you're doing is praying that you ain't got STDs or AIDS when you go to the clinic. All you're doing is praying that this scam works and you can come up on a, a quick come up. You ain't praying for nothing that God wants you to pray for. They right. ain't hearing you. Oh, you want to pray you ain't got high blood pressure. Well, I've been told you not to eat pork, shrimp, crab, lobster. Now you're about to have a heart attack and you want me to save your life? Hell no. Die. Bring it out. If my people, keep reading, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, humble themselves to hear what? What do you got to hear? <laughs> which is what? The what? The word which is the, what did I say earlier you find in the Bible? The law. The laws. That's how you humble yourself to God. Read on. And pray and seek. Hold on. And pray. So when you humble yourself to God's law and you pray, then God will do what? There you go. He'll hear you then. What we've been trying to do is force God to meet us on our terms. Come on. He don't even dwell in time. He ain't got nobody. He ain't worried about. He will let you die over and over and over again until you humble yourself to hear the law of God. Keep reading. And seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Turn from their wicked ways. Deuteronomy 22 and 5. I'm going to tell, tell you one of the wicked ways that we have as God's people. Watch this. And you're going to be like, man, that's, that's crazy. Watch this. Deuteronomy. I'm going to ask you all a question. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. You, brother, what's your name? Xavier. Xavier. What is a woman's garment, clothing, that a man shouldn't be wearing? Uh, a man shouldn't wear uh, undergarments or underwear and stuff like that. Undergarments? What is under? Come on. Make it plain. What's Panties? undergarments? Panties. Okay, what else? So, so, So we should walk around in dresses. Oh, you didn't mention that. You wear undergarments. Man should be wearing what? Like what? There you go. That's it. I mean, why, why are we wearing dresses? God said you're supposed to be wearing no dresses as a man. Skirts. What kind of skirts? Now, Xavier, here's a question. Here's a question for you. Because you're about to say subcultures like the, uh, the Scottish wear skirts. Where are they on this sign that Bring are God's people? Out. Bring it out. Bring it out. 
where are they at on this side for God's people that God said if my people he didn't say you see what I'm saying God didn't say everybody you see what religion taught us that God's talking there no he said my people God got a people so God don't give a damn what them Scottish people were because they ain't his people yeah he made them he don't give a damn about them he only care about you just like it's other people on the earth but you don't love everybody's kids do you no, you don't. You don't love them. That's the same way God is. Right. Now, read that again from the top. When man ain't supposed to be wearing dresses, panties, bras, skirts, heels, lipstick, eyeliner. Ugh. Read it. Verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Now, mama, the aged woman. What? belongs to a man that God says women shouldn't be wearing that pants and guess what that includes leggings you know why cause all actuality those ain't nothing but underwear that go up under a what there you go you know that but you know what you know what your enemies did <laughs> they made you thank God love you no matter what and you can do whatever you want to and he accepts you how you are but you're a baby mama you can do whatever you want to. You can live however you want to, but the consequences of that is you're going to be a baby mama. That's right. what this white Jesus teach you. Right. You're going you to grow up without a daddy. Your kids going to grow up without a father. That's the consequences of doing what... Uh, you're going to have men hit on you only when they walk past you. Right. Why do you think men always tap a woman on the shoulder? Bring it out. Why do they always tap you on the shoulder? Why don't they come up to you face to face and say, hey, why do they always tap you? I'm going to ask Xavier. Why do men always tap women on the shoulder and then want to talk to them? Now, don't give me some, give me the, be real. Don't give me no philosophical stuff. Be real. Why do men tap women on the shoulder and then want to talk to them and not face to face? They walk right up on them. Okay, tell me why you would do it. Yeah, why? Why did you walk up on them face to face and get to know them? Why did you tap them on their shoulder? Well, okay, let's ask. What, what are they seeing? They see the ass. Come on, Xavier. You black just like I am, dude. We know what our women got. That's why we wait for them. Walk past us, look at it. Hey, little mama, what's your, you know? Because a woman is wearing, if you want to do you, go ahead and do it. God says it's going to be consequences behind it. And you're going to be used and abused. Because a woman's not supposed to what? Woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Now, in the eyes of God, is that good or is it bad if a woman wears what belongs to Xavier? It's bad. Just the same way if Xavier was wearing a dress, it would be bad, right? Now go back to that scripture we just had. Uh, yep. Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. How does a woman that is called by God's name, that's an Israelite from the tribe of Judah, how would she humble herself after hearing the law of God pertaining to dress code? How would she humble herself in the eyes of God. What would she do? She would do what? There you go. That's what God, that's that's what all of us had to do when we read certain laws that we were breaking and God said that it was wickedness. We had to humble ourselves to the word of God and when we did that, God said, I could deal with you now. Now he given us the wisdom that is hid from your pastors. Your pastors don't even know the stuff in here. Right. Mm -hmm. Your pastors don't even know the stuff in here. All the pastors teach you is John 3.16 for God so loved the world. And pay your tithes. Because they don't understand that now sin here because they have not humbled themselves to the word of God. Keep reading. That's just going into you what you said be not a simp. Read. And seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Your wicked ways is a woman not putting on pants and a man not putting on a dress. Read on. Then will I hear from heaven. Oh, then what? 
will I hear from heaven? God only hears you after what, Xavier? After you do what? Yeah, and you have to, in humbling yourself, you, you're doing what? What's the action you're taking when you humble yourself in the eyes of God? You begin to keep his what? Okay, give me the, Yeah, yeah, yeah. De Deuteronomy 4, verse 44. Yeah, read that. And then I'll get that. Read it. Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 44. And this is the law. What? The law. Who did he give the law to? Which Moses set before the children of Israel. God wants the children of Israel to keep what? Xavier. What does he want you to keep? I'm not sure. I'm learning. I'm learning. Read it. And this is the law which Moses set before the children of Israel. God wants the children of Israel to keep what? Uh, uh, read it one more time. I'm reading another script too. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4 and verse 44. And this is the law. What is it? The what? It's the law. The what? Which Moses set before the children of Israel. So the children of Israel are supposed to do what? There you go. How many times I read it? Three times, right? Ex Ezekiel chapter 12. I'm going to prove to you that you're an Israelite from the tribe of Judah just by the interaction we just had. I read it three times. It's only about eight words. Watch this. Read that. Exodus chapter Ezekiel chapter 12 and verse 1. The word of the Lord also came unto me, saying, Son of man, thou dwellest in the midst of a rebellious house. A rebellious house, the children of Israel. Read. Which have eyes to see. They got what? Eyes to see. Maybe you got eyes to see, right? Read. And see not. And don't what? And see not. They can't see what's going on. Read. They have ears to hear. They got ears like you got, Xavier, right? And what? And hear not. How many times did we read that scripture? And you didn't hear what in that? What word did you not hear that we were stressing? The law. You didn't hear it. We read it three times. That proves that right now, whatever life you live in, you're in the midst of rebellion and your ears are closed to the words of God. You can't even hear them. Men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. is you.